Welcome to Advanced Learning Tutoring. This is the Biology Playlist. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Animal tissues, organs and organ systems. Cells are the basic building blocks for all living organisms. A tissue is a group of cells with a similar structure and function. Organs are a number of different tissues working together to perform specific functions. Organs are organised into organ systems, which work together to form organisms. An example of a cell is a muscle cell. An example of a tissue is muscular tissue, which is many muscle cells working together for muscle contraction. An example of an organ is a stomach. The stomach is made up of muscular tissue for contraction and relaxation to mix or churn food. Glandular tissue to secrete digestive enzymes and acid into the stomach. And epithelial tissue. The stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, liver, gallbladder are all organs which are part of the digestive system. Other systems include the circulatory system and the respiratory system. Enzymes. Enzymes are formed of protein. They are described as biological catalysts. They are naturally produced by the body and increase the rate of chemical reactions. Digestive enzymes convert food, large molecules, into smaller, more soluble molecules that can be absorbed into the bloodstream. The products of digestion are used to build new carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. And some glucose is used in respiration. Enzymes work by a mechanism known as the enzyme substrate mechanism, also described as the lock and key mechanism. The enzyme has an active site which is part of the enzyme, which is a specific shape that will fit a specific substrate. For example, protease is an enzyme and it will specifically fit a protein molecule. The substrate reacts with the active site of the enzyme to produce smaller products. These products will leave the active site. Carbohydrates are large complex molecules that can be broken down by an enzyme known as amylase. Amylase is produced in the salivary glands in the mouth, the pancreas and the small intestine. Carbohydrates are starches or complex sugars and these are broken down by amylase into smaller, more simple sugar molecules. Proteins are broken down by protease into amino acids. Protease is produced in the stomach, the pancreas and the small intestine. Lipase is the enzyme that breaks down lipids, which are fats. These are broken down into fatty acids and a glycerol molecule. Lipase is produced in the pancreas and the small intestine. Bile. Bile is made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. It is an alkaline liquid used to neutralize hydrochloric acid from the stomach. It also emulsifies fat to form small droplets, which increase the surface area of the fat molecules. This is to ensure that the lipase enzyme is able to access and break down smaller molecules of lipids. The alkaline conditions and large surface area increase the rate of fat breakdown by lipase. Required practical food tests. We can use a number of different reagents to test for a specific food group. Carbohydrates are either starches or reducing sugars. Reducing sugars are tested using Benedict's reagent. Benedict's solution is blue, 
and depending on the concentration of glucose present, will give a red-brown precipitate. The shade of the resulting solution, if green or yellow, that means there is a lower concentration of reducing sugar. If the resulting solution changes orange or red-brown, then there is a higher concentration of sugar solution. You add Benedict's solution to your food and you heat in a water bath. To test for starch, another type of carbohydrate, you use iodine reagent. Iodine is an orange liquid and will turn blue-black if starch is present. To test for proteins, you use biuret reagent. It's a blue solution that will turn purple if protein is present. The emulsion test is used to test for lipids or fats. You use a solvent, for example ethanol, and add to your fat solution. What you will see when you pour the liquid into a second test tube containing water is that you will have a cloudy liquid or an emulsion indicating that the presence of a lipid is in your food. Effect of pH on enzyme activity, required practical. Investigate the breakdown of starch by amylase at different pHs. The different pHs under investigation will be produced using a buffer solution. Buffer solutions produce a particular pH and will maintain it if other substances are added. A series of test tubes containing a mixture of starch and amylase is set up at different pHs. The amylase will break down the starch. A sample is removed from the test tubes every 10 seconds to test for the presence of starch. Iodine solution will turn a blue-black colour when starch is present. So when all of the starch is broken down, a blue-black colour is no longer produced and the iodine solution will remain orange. To investigate the effect of pH, you must control the temperature using a water bath, the concentration of amylase solution and the concentration of starch solution. Heart and blood vessels. The heart is an organ that pumps blood around the body in a double circulatory system, a system of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs where gas exchange takes place. The left ventricle pumps blood around the rest of the body. The ventricles are the lower chambers of the heart and the atrium are the higher chambers of the heart. The natural resting heart rate is controlled by a group of cells located in the right atrium that act as a pacemaker. Artificial pacemakers are electrical devices used to correct irregularities in the heart rate. There are arteries and veins going into and out of the heart. Veins carry blood into the heart. The vena cava is a vein that carries blood into the heart from the body. This is deoxygenated blood. The pulmonary vein takes oxygenated blood into the heart from the lungs. The pulmonary artery carries blood away from the heart to the lungs. This blood is deoxygenated. The aorta is an artery that carries oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. The heart has valves. These valves separate the chambers in the heart, preventing backflow of blood into the previous chamber. Blood vessels. Describe how the structure of the blood vessels are adapted to their function. Arteries have a narrow lumen and thick muscular walls. They always carry blood away from the heart. They carry oxygenated blood except for the pulmonary artery. They carry blood under high pressure. 
they have thick muscular and elastic walls to withstand this high pressure blood. A type of supporting tissue called connective tissue provides strength. The channel in the blood vessel that carries the blood, known as the lumen, is narrow. Veins have a wider lumen. They always carry blood into the heart. They carry deoxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary vein, and they carry blood under low pressure. They have thin walls, less muscular tissue than arteries. They have less connective tissue than arteries and a wider lumen. They also have valves to prevent backflow of blood to ensure that blood flow is only in one direction as it's under low pressure. Capillaries connect the smallest branches of arteries and veins. The walls of capillaries are just one cell thick. Capillaries therefore allow the exchange of molecules between the blood and the body's cells. Molecules are able to diffuse across their walls. Oxygen diffuses through the capillary wall into tissue fluid and cells. Carbon dioxide diffuses from the cells into the tissue fluid, then across the capillary walls into the blood plasma. Glucose diffuses from the blood plasma across capillary walls to tissue fluid and then into cells. Blood can be classified as a tissue. A reminder that a tissue is a group of similar cells working together to perform a function. The blood consists of plasma in which the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are suspended. The function of the red blood cells are to transport oxygen and they are specialised. They've adapted to have no nucleus and are biconcave in shape for the maximum oxygen transport. Plasma, transporting carbon dioxide, digested food molecules such as glucose and amino acids, urea and hormones. Red blood cells transport oxygen. White blood cells ingest pathogens and produce antibodies and antitoxins. Platelets are involved in blood clotting. In coronary heart disease, layers of fatty material build up on the inside of the coronary arteries, which narrow them. This reduces the blood flow through the coronary arteries, resulting in a lack of oxygen for the heart muscle. When the heart muscle has a lack of oxygen, this means a lower rate of respiration will occur. Therefore, less energy is released and therefore less muscle contraction. This can cause heart attacks. Stents are used to keep the coronary arteries open, whereas statins are widely used to reduce blood cholesterol levels, which slow down the rate of the fatty material depositing. In some people, heart valves may become faulty, preventing the valve from opening fully, or the heart valve might develop a leak. Faulty heart valves can be replaced using biological or mechanical valves. Biological valves are those that have been transferred from another living thing. In the case of heart failure, a donor heart or heart and lungs can be transplanted. Artificial hearts are occasionally used to keep patients alive whilst waiting for a heart transplant or to allow the heart to rest as an aid to recovery. Coronary heart disease treatment analysis. There are various types of treatment for CHD. We could take statins, which are drugs, a heart transplant, replacement heart valves, or the fitting of stents. Advantages of statins reduce the risk of heart attack. Studies have shown a decrease in bad cholesterol and an increase in good cholesterol. This is used to reduce high cholesterol levels that have genetic causes. They may have beneficial effects on other conditions. Disadvantages, however, 
are not suitable for people with liver disease. They have some side effects. They must be taken for life and should not be taken when pregnant or breastfeeding. Heart transplant advantage is improving quality of life. Disadvantages, however, few donor hearts are available. Recovery time is long. There is a risk of rejection by the body's immune system as the DNA is not the same as the body. Replacement heart valves, advantages, restore blood flow through the heart. Disadvantages, biological valves may wear out, blood clots may stick to mechanical valves, and anti-blood clotting drugs need to be taken. Stents, advantages, widen the coronary arteries that have not responded to drug treatment. The recovery time is short following the insertion of a stent. Disadvantages? In a minority of cases, further treatment is required. Health is the state of physical and mental well-being. Diseases, both communicable, which are spread from person to person, and non-communicable, which cannot be spread from person to person. These are major causes of ill health. Other factors, including diet, stress, and life situations, may have a profound effect on both physical and mental health. Defects in the immune system mean that individuals are more likely to suffer from infectious diseases. Viruses living in cells can be the trigger for cancers as cancers are abnormal cells. Immune reactions initially caused by a pathogen can trigger allergies such as skin rashes and asthma. Severe physical ill health can lead to depression and other mental illnesses. Three examples of non-communicable diseases include cancer, diabetes and liver disease associated with alcohol. Discuss the financial implications to the individual, local and national community of these non-communicable diseases. Individuals may need to purchase medication to treat the disease. NHS funding pays for operations required associated with the disease. For example, liver transplants caused by alcoholism, lung transplants caused by smoking, or weight loss treatments for obesity. Explain the risk factors associated with non-communicable diseases. The effects of diet, smoking and exercise on cardiovascular disease. Obesity is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. The effect of alcohol on the liver and brain function. The effect of smoking on lung disease and lung cancer the effects of smoking and alcohol on unborn babies, carcinogenics, including ionizing radiation as risk factors in cancer. Cancer is the result of changes in cells that lead to uncontrolled growth and division. There are two types of tumor, benign or malignant. Benign tumors grow slowly usually grow within a membrane, so they can easily be removed. It does not spread and invade other parts of the body. Whereas malignant tumours grow quickly, they invade neighbouring tissues and can spread to other parts of the body through the bloodstream. As the tumour grows, cancer cells detach and can form secondary tumours in other parts of the body. This is called metastasis. There are genetic factors that increase the likelihood of developing some cancers. Chemicals and other agents that can cause cancer are called carcinogens. Carcinogens cause cancer by damaging DNA. Carcinogens cause mutations to occur. A single mutation will not cause cancer, several are required. For this reason, we are more likely to develop cancer as we get older. Organisation in plants.
Plant tissues include epidermal tissues, palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll, the xylem and the phloem, meristem tissue found in the growing tips of shoots and roots. The leaf is an example of a plant organ. A reminder that an organ is many tissues working together to perform a function. Looking at the diagram of the cross section of the leaf, we see a waxy cuticle on the top layer. This is for waterproofing. We have tissues, the upper and lower epidermis in the leaf. Below the epidermis, we have the palisade mesophyll. Here we identify this tissue contains many chloroplasts. A reminder that the chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. The palisade mesophyll is located towards the upper surface of the leaf as it is closest to the sun. The spongy mesophyll has many air spaces. This is for the exchange of gases. Gases need to make their way to the palisade mesophyll and from the palisade mesophyll. These gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide. Gases enter the leaf through the stomata, which are the tiny pores on the lower surface of the leaf. Transpiration and translocation. The roots, stem and leaves form a plant organ system for transport of substances around the plant. Transpiration is the transport of water and mineral ions through the plant from the roots to the leaves through the xylem. The xylem is a tissue. Transpiration happens in one direction, from the roots to the leaves. The water then evaporates through the stomata. The rate of transpiration is affected by a range of factors. These factors include temperature, humidity, air movement and light intensity. If there is a temperature increase, it increases the rate of transpiration as more water molecules evaporate from the cell surfaces. Humidity is the measurement of moisture in the air. As humidity decreases, this increases the rate of transpiration. As humidity is the measurement of moisture in the air, if there is very dry air, so therefore decreased humidity, this will increase the rate of transpiration. The reduced concentration of water molecules outside the leaf causes the diffusion of water from the leaf to increase. As air movement increases, the rate of transpiration increases. This explains why on a windy day, plants are losing more water as water vapour from the leaf surface diffuses from the leaf. As light intensity increases, the rate of transpiration increases. This is due to the increased rate of photosynthesis. Stomata open so that water diffuses out of the leaf. The process of translocation is the mo movement of dissolved sugars from the leaves to the rest of the plant for immediate use in processes such as respiration or for storage. Dissolved sugars are transported through the phloem tissue and this happens in all directions through the plant.